When it comes to astrophotography and life, you're going to encounter numerous challenges along the journey. And tonight I'm going to challenge myself by photographing a new planet. This planet can be a bit difficult to image because it's closer to the sun and it can only be seen during specific times of the year. Nevertheless, I'm still going to try my hand at it to see what type of result I can capture. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I make my first attempt to photograph the planet Venus. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, Venus is the second planet in our solar system. It's a terrestrial planet and is the closest in mass and size to our own Earth. Venus has by far the densest atmosphere of the terrestrial planets composed mostly of carbon dioxide with a thick global sulfuric acid cloud cover. At the surface, it has an average temperature of almost 900 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure 92 times that of Earth's at sea level. These extreme conditions compress carbon dioxide into a supercritical state at Venus's surface. Much of the Venusian surface appears to have been shaped by volcanic activity, as Venus has several times as many volcanoes as Earth, and it has 167 large volcanoes that are over 60 miles across. Spacecraft that have visited Venus include Mariner 2 from the United States, which made atmospheric observations in December 1962, and Venera 7 from the Soviet Union, which was the first spacecraft to land on the Venusian surface and transmit data in December 1970. The latest spacecraft to study Venus was the Akatsuki probe from Japan, which was in operation between 2015 and 2024. So for this imaging session, I'll be using my Celestron Edge HD 9.25 Schmidt-Cassegrain telescope. And for imaging, I'll be using the ZWO ASI 224 MC one shot color planetary webcam. And of course, you guessed it, this will all be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG. And since Venus is quite bright, I'll be using a neutral density filter to help minimize the brightness so I can see the planetary details a little bit better. So, are you ready? With all that being said, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the planet Venus.
So as you may have noticed from my background, I am not at the Astro Park right now. This is because Venus is rather low on the horizon and I can't get a clear view of the planet from the park. So I had to go to a location where I had a clear view of the southwest horizon. And this is a challenge you may encounter when imaging Venus, because in the northern hemisphere, the planet will appear on the low horizon in the late evening or early morning, depending on the season. And if you photograph Venus in the early morning, always be mindful of the sunrise because you don't want the sun's rays to damage your telescope. And since I'm imaging Venus in the low horizon, I have to make sure that my ADC is tuned properly to minimize the effects of the atmospheric dispersion since I'll most likely be looking through a thick layer of atmosphere. And if there's anything that the ADC might have missed, I should be able to correct for it in Registax using the RGB Align tool. So I'm actually at a field in my workplace and I have all of my setup procedures for my equipment completed. So let's slew over to Venus, start up fire capture, and let's see what we can get. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm inside of Fire Capture, and my imaging session for the planet Venus is now in session. So just like our own moon, the planet Venus also goes through a series of phases. You can observe and image Venus in the gibbous phase, quarter phase, and crescent phase. And tonight I'm imaging Saturn in the gibbous phase. All three phases to me are pretty cool, but for me personally, I like to look at Venus in the gibbous and quarter phases because I want to try and see if I can see those cloud band details, which I'm most interested in. So when it comes to imaging Venus, you can do it in one of two different ways. The first way is what I'm doing tonight using a color camera and a neutral density filter. So the reason I'm using an ND filter is because Venus is very bright in the sky. I believe its magnitude is somewhere around negative four, which is almost as bright as the star Sirius in the constellation of Canis Major, and is also the brightest star in the Northern Hemisphere. So because of its brightness, using an ND filter can help to minimize the glare a little bit to help you see the planetary details a little bit better. Now, usually I would use a UV IR cut filter for planetary imaging, but since I'm using a neutral density filter, I'll be able to pass through the UV and IR wavelengths this time, which is okay for a planet like Venus because the UV wavelength helps to pull out the cloud bands a little bit better. Which then leads me to the second way you can image Venus by using a monochrome camera and three different filters an IR pass filter, a green filter, and a UV pass filter. So you would record videos in each of those filters, and then in post-processing, you would place the IR data in the red channel, the green data in the green channel, and the UV data in the blue channel to create a pseudo true color image of Venus. And if you don't have a green filter, I've seen most people use a mixture of the UV and IR data to create a 
synthetic green data set to place in the green channel. So whichever way you decide to image the planet, you should get a pretty decent result in my opinion. So apart from that, everything seems to be going pretty smoothly so far. So I'm just going to continue to collect as many video files as I can of Venus. And as usual, we'll just see how the night progresses. Hey everyone, just want to give you all a quick update. The imaging session is going pretty smoothly so far. I was able to capture several video files of Venus over the last half hour. The planet is getting pretty low on the horizon now, so I have maybe one or two more opportunities before the end of the session. So I want to take a moment to talk about two types of events that you can observe or image, not just with Venus, but with all of the planets. And these events are called conjunctions and occultations. A conjunction occurs when two astronomical objects appear to be close to each other in the sky. This means they have the same right ascension as observed from Earth. Conjunctions involve either two objects in the solar system or one object in the solar system and a more distant object, such as a star. A conjunction is an apparent phenomenon caused by the observer's perspective. The two objects involved are not actually close to one another in space. Conjunctions between two bright objects close to the ecliptic, such as two bright planets, can be seen with the naked eye. Here's an image of a conjunction of the Moon, Venus, and Jupiter as seen from Brazil in December 2008. And here's an image that I took of the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in December 2020. An occultation is an event that occurs when one object is hidden from the observer by another object that passes between them. The term is often used in astronomy, but can also refer to any situation in which an object in the foreground blocks from view or occults an object in the background. This video illustrates an occultation between the Moon and Mars as the view of Mars is temporarily hidden from the Moon. You can use a planetarium software such as Stellarium to see when the next conjunction or occultation will occur and if it's visible in your area. For example, coming up in 2025 in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see a conjunction between Venus and Saturn on January 20th and a conjunction between Venus and Mercury on March 9th. So be sure to check out Stellarium as it's a great tool to use when planning your next observing or imaging session. Hey everyone, so Venus is well below the horizon now and I have to call it for tonight. I was able to capture a dozen video files of Venus 
and I'll sort through all of the data to see which file has the most stable seeing conditions and I'll use that file to create the overall image. Although this subject was quite challenging to photograph, regardless of how the photo turns out, I'm still quite happy to add another planet to my resume of solar system objects that I've captured. And as always, in this hobby, as well as life in general, I'm always looking forward to seeing the improvements I'll be able to make later on in the future. So, thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of Venus at the end of this video. And until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies. <laughs>